Hello again, everyone. This is Kevin. Uh, today, I'm going to show you just a few little tips and tricks on the E2 specifically, or Event Master Toolset. So we all know the Event Master Toolset is an amazing image processing system, screen management system. There might be times, however, when you're required to cut cameras or between a source back and forth. And while it's not really the intended use case of, say, a vision mixer with a standard camera switcher, there are a lot of tips and tricks that I can show you to make your life a little bit easier if you're tasked with doing that. Okay, so to uh, set this up really quick, I'm gonna build a widescreen destination just so we have a little bit of space on here. And as always, I'm gonna add a few mixing layers. Please see previous videos if you want uh, information on how we got to this point. I'm gonna build three input sources of cameras. I will call them cam1, cam2, cam3. Great. I'm also going to build a, ah, we'll forget the background source for right now. So I'm going to go to my programming page and I'm going to add my thumbnails on the side here, which I should have pulled them previously, but I was just so excited that I hit record. So bear with me for 30 seconds while I find my source thumbnails. Here they are. Camera one, camera two, camera three. So we know that we are an a, um, we are a layer-based system. We're also a preset-based system. So that means if I want to switch between cameras, typically it's gonna look like this. I have camera one in preview transition. I can now change camera two to program. I can hit cut and I can go between this. However, we notice we're not doing an A, B switch. A lot of people in my classes will think that this is a bug or something wrong. That is completely correct. We are a preview program based workflow. So we build and preview, we compile that to program. When you hit all trans and auto trans and cut, we're not going to switch what was in preview before. So if you were working on certain layers, that is what's going to be there. So typically we know in the Event Master Toolset workflow, we're going to be saving presets. So if I had a preset for each camera, uh, let me move my camera over here. There we go. So I have three presets and we know it's going to be recall current, take, recall current, trans, recall current, take. So and if you're doing like a fireside chat, for example, between two cameras, a widescreen and a close up, uh, this is kind of a, a, a I'm not going to say a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. So as I said, the purpose of this video is to give you a few tips and tricks to make your life a little easier in this workflow. The first one I'm going to show you is a way to speed up the ability to take a preset into the preview bus. On the right hand side, I have my preset list, preset one for camera one, preset two for camera two, preset three for camera three. And we know, of course, the workflow is select the preset, recall current, take the preset, select the preset, recall current, take the preset. However, we can change our presets from being in a list mode to thumbnail mode. To do so, it's going to be here on the right hand side. Right above the preset list, we have list mode and thumbnail mode. When I change to thumbnail mode, this will now automatically put the preset into preview by clicking it. So I've now removed that necessary factor of having to recall current. So I've made this a little faster. So now select preset all trans, select preset all trans, select preset all trans, get in there. However, still a little clunky. So Another thing we can do, a lot of people don't know about this. Did you know that there are actually built in keyboard shortcuts on the Event Master Toolset? To access these, we're gonna to go to the settings tab on the left hand side, this little tog wheel here. And at the very bottom, there's gonna be an enable here for keyboard shortcuts. If we expand, we're gonna see which options we have. Multiple select, clear layer, all trans, uh, next preset, previous preset. We see that all trans is enter. You can actually click it and customize it. So if you want it to be a different key, uh, I'm gonna keep it enter and I'm gonna enable keyboard shortcuts. I can now go back to my programming page. So now combining this, I can select the preset, hit enter, select the preset, hit enter, select the preset, hit enter, preset, enter, preset, enter, preset, enter, preset, enter. And this is really great for doing um, all trans, 
Super cool. Uh, there's not a way to do cut as far as I know. I'm sure somebody will happily correct me if that's the case. So that's a tip to speed up your workflow. Now that said, when you're going between two cameras or maybe you're going between PowerPoint and iMag on a show or still store and iMag, who knows? Um, one of the benefits of a vision-based switch like camera switch is you can literally just hit cut back and forth. It's gonna flip flop. Now, once again, that's not our intended workflow. However, there is a way to temporarily work in that type of workflow. Immediately to the left of my camera here, you can point the other way right here, <laughs> is a button called toggle. This is what's referred to as a layer toggle. So if I select toggle, notice that it now shows this mix T next to the layer. I'm gonna turn off, so mix, and now I turn toggle on. Now what happens is when I hit uh, cut or all trans or anything like that, watch what happens. I'm gonna hit all trans. And it's now toggled the position of the layers. So now if I hit my enter key, which is once again my hot key for all trans, I now truly am going back and forth on the layer. Now remember, this is a layer-based manipulation. However, you can select multiple layers. We have select all, and then we also have multiple select turned off. So I can have this turn on for multiple layers. And now as long, and this also works for cut two, by the way. So if I wanna go between camera one and camera two, boom. And now I can click back and forth. Once again, this is great for going between logo and iMag, iMag and PowerPoint. We have a keynote presenter. You have never seen their slides, but they want to take iMag in between. Great. So that's really cool. Now, once again, uh, and then I disable toggle. The act of being toggled will store in a preset and you can actually, I believe you could store that in a user key, but someone will have to uh, correct me on that. I don't want to give misinformation here. Cool. As I mentioned as well, this workflow does work fine when you have more than one layer. So say I have two layers here. We'll go ahead and transition these. And now let's say I want to switch to camera three, and camera one. I don't want these to go back and forth. I'm going to turn on multiple select. I'm going to select these two layers. I'm going to turn toggle on. Notice the toggle is now going between and now I can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Turn multiple select off, and now I can still toggle. Let me turn this one off. And now I can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's another way to make your life easier. The other way I'm gonna show you, another little tip and trick for you, is did you know that there is a way to have independent transition control of a specific layer? Especially if you're doing like a widescreen composition with multiple layers, maybe you have a reason that you just want to change one layer, one pip, but you don't have a preset built. You don't want to juggle it and, and go to that workflow. You've probably seen it before, but here at the bottom of the uh, screen here, there is a little button here called trans and cut and rate frame and S curve, very similar to what's on the lower right hand corner for the actual transition. This, however, is a layer based transition. So if I have this layer selected, I can now hit trans and transition just this one layer. Ooh. If I also enable toggle, I can now do the cut of just the one layer. Super cool, super cool. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you, or the last thing with this, the thing that makes your life easy, this next one's very helpful if you have the luxury of having a controller, whether it be an EC30, EC50, EC210. So if we look at a controller, we of course know that we can customize the interfaces, we can do user keys, sources, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if we want to recreate the feel and look of a camera switcher, of a vision-based mixer, we know that that typically will have a preview bus on bottom, program bus on top. Once again, we're not, a, we're not that type of workflow here. Um, that said, there is a way to work with this. To do this, we're gonna go back to the settings page where we unlock the keyboard shortcuts. And you're gonna notice that there's a little button here called show program preview source bus. Ooh. So this is specifically for the controller. So I'm gonna enable this. And now when I go to my controller page, we're gonna see that if I start toggling through the buttons here, ooh, 
we now have a different element that was not available to us before. It's preview program source, and it's already pre-patched for us. So now this gives me on the destination and the layer, this gives me independent control of the source. So according to this, I'm on destination one, which by the way, for a reminder, hit this little arrow here, but that pops up the destination for you. So I'm on destination one, layer two, and it says camera two. If we verify that, um, destination one, layer two, uh, oh, camera three, because the preview program. So I'm gonna change it to camera one, and sure enough, it changes here. So I go back to the controller, I'm gonna now change it to camera two in preview, and here's camera two. And now let's see what happens if I try to change it on program. So I've said camera one should be in program. Sure enough, camera one's in program. I'm going to change this to camera three. Camera three. So I now have independent control of the preview element and the program element on a locked destination. So if you want to turn this now into basically a camera switcher, you can do so. To then make that really, really fun, remember, with a Gen 2 HDMI 2.0 output card in the multi-viewer slot, we give you four discrete multi-viewers. So what you can now do is you can do multi-viewer four, for example. We've given you multi-viewer templates. So I could find one that looks like, oh, I like this one. This looks like a preview, this looks like a vision mixer. So I can now drop my program on the left, preview on the right, and I can have my setup here with all my sources. And to make it even more fun, if we go into the multi-operator workflow, you can assign a sub operator to only control this screen destination. That way they are only controlling this native virtual camera source, camera switcher. And now remember, we allow you to use a destination as a source. So that means you could have a virtual camera switcher built in the event master tool set and then utilize that as a source on another screen. Super fun. So once again, there's just a few little tips and tricks for you for the Event Master Toolset to help you transition layers quicker and on the fly. Uh, hopefully you keep these uh, tricks up your sleeve and hopefully they get you out of a bind one day. As always, hope you enjoy the video, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll catch you later.